Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Are we broadcasting? We are. Wonderful. And if I could share, I can put my screen up. Yes. Shows I'm disabled to share. Um, okay, let's see. You want to make me a co-host or a host? Yes, please. Um, so sorry. This is still kind of a newer uh, make co-host. Okay. All right. There we go. Wonderful. Perfect. We can wait for a few more people to get on or what have you. Whatever makes sense for you. For sure. We'll give it just a few more minutes for people to kind of trickle in. How are you today? I'm good. How about you? Good. Are you down in Texas? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. How about you? I'm in uh, Western New York right now, okay. but normally I'm in Florida. Okay. So best of both worlds exactly especially in the winter yeah exactly Um, just for everybody that's on, I think we're going to give it maybe two more minutes just to let people uh, trickle in. Um, but just like in the meantime, you may have noticed that your audio and camera is turned off and it's just to ensure that everyone has a really great viewing experience today. But we definitely still want to hear from you. So feel free to leave questions or comments in the Q&A. Um, okay, I think we're like two minutes after. Um, probably a great time to get started. My name's Adriana and I'm with Child Care CRM. And I am happy to introduce today's guest speaker, Tony D. Agostino, uh, the CEO wow. and founder of Inspire Care 360, as well as an experienced child care business owner. Thanks so much for joining us today, Tony. Adriana, thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. So let me know when you're ready to go and we can uh, jump in and get going. I am ready when you are. All right, wonderful. Um, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending. I appreciate greatly. Matt and the Child Care CRM team inviting me to come on and talk with you folks today. 
Um, as Adriana had mentioned to you, uh, we are, um, well, I'm the founder and CEO of Inspire Care 360, but prior to that, as well as currently today, I own and operate a few schools in Western New York. I've had those for over 12 years now, and I deal probably with the exact same challenges all of you deal with. So we have all the issues of regulatory issues, dealing with ratios, making sure that we can recruit and retain top talent and all those issues. And it's one of the reasons that I've developed Inspire Care 360. So today we're gonna to do a presentation on turning the tide on turnover. And in doing that, our, my objective is, is to try to make this as interactive as possible. Adriana promised me that uh, graciously that if you do put questions um, in the Q&A section, that she will uh, be able to ask me those questions. And same with the Q&A or the chat, I might ask you folks some questions. And then we'll look to see if you have a few responses that you would like to bring our way. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, I would like to go ahead and get started for you folks. And so let's do this. Let's move forward. And the first thing I would like to tell you about is I actually have a few little housekeeping things too. One of the things that we're doing in close proximity to Child Care CRM is because they will be there as one of our key sponsors, but we are holding our own conference this year, which is Spark 2022. This is a conference that will be going on this coming November, and it is definitely in sunny southwest Florida. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful weather. It's in the first few days and is our first conference Um you know, again, on November 3rd and 4th with a check-in on the 2nd. We have tickets available, but our theme, which is unique in this industry, which is what we're talking about today too, is all about people and talent. We already have a number of speakers. Adriana is going to send you a link to our page on our website that talks about Spark 2022 the the reason the value of it the hopefully the benefits for you it's going to be an intimate event too um and what we mean by intimate is we only have 100 tickets that we're going to be doing this year we have some really dynamic speakers a couple that you may have heard of who have been in our industry a few of them that have worked with us in inspire care 360 around some back office services as well as an author and speaker who is just absolutely amazing which we're really happy to have as one of our keynotes so it is promising to be a, a wonderful event we are looking to have those owners and operators only attend so it is not an event really for directors to come by themselves if they are an executive director they might be coming with you as an owner uh, you are all invited to join us with us it is really focused again on that staff development of leadership optimizing your schools and there's a significant networking opportunity. We call it intimate because it's not going to be um, this big separation from presentations or you know different trade show rooms and that. It's really about getting together and having a chance to network. It is definitely going to be a VIP level experience. So the way I look at it is you know no box lunch kind of experience. You know high quality event venue. The picture in the background is the venue. It is in beautiful Cape Coral outside of Captiva and San. Annabelle. There's, it's a wonderful place and there's an opportunity that if you want to stay before or stay after, you can do that too at our negotiated rates. But it's a wonderful experience, it's going to be great food. And we also negotiate a wonderful price for that too for the rooms at 265 normally. And if you, um, you know, uh, it's really close to the airport, but when uh, you go through this entire presentation. At the end, I have a very special offer for anybody who might be interested in attending. So we'll talk about that, but I'm going to jump into what we're going to talk about today. And today's agenda is what does turnover really mean? Why is it happening? And what can you do to possibly stem it? So, you know, first thing I want to tell you, for those of you who don't know who Inspire Care 360 is, we're an affiliate partner with Child Care CRM, but we've been throughout the industry for a number of years. And we do something that's relatively unique in the industry that not many others do. And that is we truly in focus on what I would say is what I call the child care 
success model. That is that if you engage your staff and your families, you can focus on growing your enrollment and growing your brand and reputation, and then you're able to optimize your profitability. We have three divisions, engage, grow, and optimize. And in those, we our solution is a membership. And the reason it's a membership, it's sort of like healthcare in a way, I shouldn't say healthcare, but a, a health club. Uh, you know, or a gym that you go to. There's a lot of different offers and values that you have at uh, going to a health club and you don't use probably everything. You might use Pilates and free weights or swimming and yoga, what have you, but you tend not to use everything. But in our membership, a lot of things comes with it, including onboarding training, orientation, handbooks, all your operational procedures. And then we have Inspire University for delivering not only professional growth content with over 100 hours of what we have, but also any of your own learning, any of your own training that you've developed, PowerPoints, videos, people. So it makes it, you know, one person once said to me, if it's repeatable, where you have to repeat it over and over again, you should create it into repeatable training. And that's what our platform is about. We also have a magnificent healthcare program that's highly affordable and highly flexible, something really unique in the industry. It, and also HR support comes with it. The, the healthcare is something above and beyond, but we can always talk to you about that too. We also do in our growth section, we help you understand what your brand is and a roadmap to success, as well as if you are seeking a level of digital marketing from the advertising to really, if you're doing what kind of web uh, presence you should possibly have and everything in between. And then reputation management. Reputation in our industry is probably by far and away the most important thing. Our reputation is everything. And how do you really take a hold and manage your reputation from understanding what it is, knowing what your families and staff and community think about it, as well as how do you grow it? How do you get more star ratings? How do you make sure to protect it if something serious happened and you had a, a crisis or something happened? We have all solutions within our membership to support that. And then hopefully you are becoming profitable or at least driving in the revenue. And that is the opportunity for us to help you really focus on putting that oxygen mask on first for you and really becoming profitable. We have solutions about developing leadership in your teams from not just management to leadership. And then above and beyond all that, we have nationally negotiated pricings on all your office, school, maintenance, supplies, food, up to 50% off that not only takes care of our membership, but really focuses on you and your business, as well as on capital goods, services, software, and the like. So that's a little bit about who we are. Let's jump into this presentation. What is turnover? Well, turnover really happens in two different types. Turnover is voluntary or involuntary. Voluntary is when you have a staff member who leaves. They either give you notice or what we've noticed Unfortunately, what's happening in the past couple of years is ghosting. This is where a staff member just no longer decides to show up. Uh, that is something that is becoming a big issue. I was actually on the phone with one of my, um, my with my executive director earlier today, and we had a few people that uh, actually two people that we had hired through some of our schools, and neither one showed up for the first day. And we were talking about strategies as to making sure. So even though I'll be talking about this, and we've implemented a lot of this. It's sometimes tough to still get away from it. So involuntary is really when you are releasing that staff member. And there's oftentimes the best ways and best practices to do it, as well as the value you'll get out of that. So today, we're going to talk a lot more about recruiting and retaining and how you can really affect it. So hopefully coming out of this presentation today, you should feel armed with a few new ideas and approaches as to why people come with you as well as why people leave your schools. And then think about ways that you can start working with your team to try to prevent or encourage. So prevent people from turning over, encourage people for joining your schools. Okay. So Let's talk a little bit about the true teacher cost. So Adriana, if you're there, I'm going to ask them a question, uh, everybody in our audience. What do we feel is the average cost of an individual who leaves a school? What is the cost to the school for someone who, uh, when we have a staff turnover for one individual? 
So I want to, you know, that's a question for you. So if you want to answer in the chat what you think the dollar figure is, you know, is it, you know, uh, a few hundred, a few thousand dollars? Um, you know, tell us what your thoughts are. I'd love to get your feel for what you think the cost is of turnover. So if you want to shoot out uh, a couple numbers there, and we'd love to see what some of your thoughts are. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes just so you can drop something in there, either in Q&A or in chat, but it's probably uh, easier in the chat function just to give your response. Oh, it's saying chat is disabled. Okay, so uh, you, but you can put it in the Q and A. We've got uh, five thousand. Okay, ten, 10 to fifteen thousand. Yep. Uh, Twenty five percent annual fee. Okay. Ten thousand. Uh, looks like a thousand. Yeah. A thousand. <laughs> and ten thousand uh, so, after that. So we've got some numbers like all over the board. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And yes, let's use Q&A since it looks like chat is disabled for right now. Um, and we'll probably put uh, some information out in the chat. But thank you for doing that. Let's go through what some of the realistic numbers are. Okay. So first, separation cost, including substitute coverage, on average in our industry is around $3,000. So that is what it takes usually and hits the bottom line for what it takes to when you lose an individual. When you're recruiting, you're screening, you're interviewing, you're hiring, and your background costs, that's another $2,000. Now, some of this might seem like, well, that's an awful lot. I really don't uh, think that some of these costs can be real. But here's the challenge. If you think about it, what is going on when you lose a staff member? Your assistant director, possibly your director, have to go in the room they no longer can do a lot of the work that they need to do. You have other people taking the workload balance. So then on top of it, you have the onboarding costs, something I talked about what IC360 does, but typically when a director and, and the new hires are going through that, there's about $2,000 of effort to get someone up and running. And then the cultural engagement loss. What do we mean by that? So when you lose a staff member, Oftentimes what happens, it has an effect on your other staff. It really takes a blow. Sometimes when someone leaves out of the blue and let's say they've been there for a while, you know, oftentimes they're like, well, where did they go? Are they getting paid more? Maybe I should consider leaving the organization. It takes, um, it takes a punishment on your existing staff. And then there is the things that you have to do in the back office from all of the setups that you have done for getting a person on board. Well, you have a lot of those costs too when a person is leaving and pursuing Department of Labor, if it is a, depending on how the separation is and things of that nature. And then the revenue loss. Let's consider the fact that if you lost a teacher who has been there and the parents have become very much focused and you know supportive of that teacher, you may lose several children in that process. You know, I would say a few years ago we had a situation happen where one of our preschool teachers decided to leave on a whim. And we lost a few kids in that classroom who decided that, well, it was the time and place for them to leave because the teacher was changing out. That alone, if we valued an individual child at ten thousand dollars a year, where now it's probably closer to thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars a year, you are starting to see that an individual teacher leaving can cost your organization significant amounts. So this seems like it's a lot, but realistically, this is the impact that you have for turnover. Where are employees' thoughts on the issue? So. According to a Zippa study, 40% of employees have impulsively resigned at some point in their professional lives. I will tell you in our industry, we're seeing more that impulsive resignations happen, you know, more and more, and it is becoming a challenge. We are also seeing that 33% of employees intend to remain in their current position, only a third. This is lower compared to 47% who reported the same in 2019. This came from Achievers Workforce in 2021. So it means almost a third of your staff are considering, well, two thirds of your staff are considering moving on right now. So it's really about how do you lock down your base? 
51% of workers are actively looking. So almost half of your staff is possibly actively looking for other opportunities or keeping themselves posted. I know that recently we even had a situation where one of our school age teachers, because we were recruiting from one of my other schools, saw that school teacher's name on Indeed. And when we approached her, she said, oh, I just put it up there. I'm not really looking for anything. Well, we did get a resignation eventually. And the fact of the matter is, you do have a number of your staff who are actively looking at this time. I'm not telling most of you anything new, but I think some of these numbers are semi-startling to us. 64% of employees report thinking about quitting their job, which 13% do consistently. That's a very big number. That is difficult for us. And that's within the industry that we have here. So what is the reason, reasonable rate of turnover in a child care? In our industry, our typical U.S. average for across all companies is about 20%. But for the child care industry, backed up by a Hi Mama survey, as well as some other data that we have that came in, child care is at about 40%. That's almost half of our staff in turnover. That's a huge number. How do you tell what your turnover percentage is? It's relatively simple. Look at the average number of jobs that you have a year, and then look at the number of W-2s that you've put out at the end of that year. That oftentimes means that there's a number of people, some of them may be seasonal, some of them may have just gone to college or what have you, but a number of them may have left you. And it's a real good way to understand how you can really affect something that's affecting your bottom line. After we had COVID and the pandemic, that number has gone up significantly more. So resignation rates you know, for tenure. This is really pretty important if you think about it. In one year, the, within the first year of employment, almost 45% chance that that individual will leave, almost a 50% that that person is going to leave. So, you know, a one in two chance that an individual is going to leave if they're with you for a year. By year one through three, it gets down to 20%. Less, so you're over half that it's dropping down to. That's a huge number that's super important for us if you think about it, because what that means is if you can get a person through the first year, there's a, a basically that is reduced down by almost 50% the chance of that person turning over. And if you can keep them over three years, they're pretty much going to be with you. So your focus really is how do you take that existing staff and really get them focused for the people who are coming in to get them engaged so they stay with you for over a year because that typically means that they're going to be more engaged and less likely to leave, okay? What is the cause of employee turnover? Let's go through a number of these things here. Lack of purpose. Companies with a purpose mission saw 49% lower attrition. What does that mean? Well, that means is do your teachers, do your you know assistants, do the other people who work for you, understand what your mission, what your values, what your vision, what's your why? Why are you guys doing what you're doing? It sounds like, you know, well, we're in the childcare business. We're taking care of kids. But the, what they're saying here is if they don't understand their purpose, they don't understand the company's purpose, attrition can be significantly higher something that we all know about, bad managers, more than half of employees who voluntarily left their roles, go back to the fact that it was because of poor management. Poor management could be a number of different things. It could be a toxic manager, someone who is really playing favoritism, for instance, who's very subjective and not objective. It could be lack of competency for that leader. In other words, they might be just that, just a manager and not truly a leader. So oftentimes what happens is we hire people from within and they do not have the skills or the abilities to really manage the team. So you're losing staff possibly because of bad management being overworked. This is huge in our industry. We all know it that because we have to stay in ratio, because of the turnover rates, we depend more and more on our other staff, our other administration, and quite often they tend to burn out. That becomes a huge load on them. Poor compensation. We have thin margins in our business. It's not like we don't want to pay our staff more. We absolutely do. And depending on the state you're in, you could still have low minimum wages, but still pay them more. 
you could be like where I am in uh, New York State with some of my schools. You know, this year we'll be at fourteen twenty for minimum wage, but we're still paying above it. And every time that creeps up, we have to pay people more and more. But there is a perception, even with a higher pay rate, such as what the state is forming, is the mentality is, is that they're still not getting paid enough. So there's other ways to look at rewards. No feedback. Quite often you have turnover because a lot of staff don't understand what's going on with the business. What is happening where you're bringing in more enrollments or what's going on with the staff? Where's the company going? That is a, a challenge. And so we, we talked about with bad management, toxic culture, nearly a quarter of people dread going into work. And a fifth of them who have left their job in the last five years. And this is due to other individuals. I was just having a conversation with my executive director earlier today about an individual that we see in our system that we believe is toxic. And that person has to go because though we know that we need someone to stay in ratio, though we don't want to, you know, uh, rock the apple cart for our families and the like, we do know that we're losing families and we're going to, well, we will lose families and we will lose staff if we don't address that issue. So toxic culture is a challenge. Believe it or not, boredom, even though they're in a room full of kids all day long, staff can very much get bored from the monotony of what is going on with their job. In poor work-life balance, look at the number on that, 403%. This is a reason for leaving and it is especially was escalated through the pandemic. We'll talk more about that. No opportunity for growth. One of the challenges that we have in our industry is the fact that careers tend to be very flat. You know, there's an assistant teacher, a teacher, or an assistant director, a director, and oftentimes that's it with a lot of our schools. That means that people don't look at coming to work for you as a career. They look at it as a job, maybe a waypoint to something they eventually would like to do. So how do you make this more about being a career? And then bad hiring procedures. When a job is not a good fit, when we're just trying to get someone in who has that beating heart to be in ratio, we oftentimes see that backfire. So now, how do we fix that? So let's jump right into there. Lack of employee purpose. Purpose starts with setting solid, agreeable, and achievable expectations. Achievable expectations. What does that mean? Well, quite oftentimes, we have the greatest intention of setting up all of our staff for success. But what happens is we sometimes don't set expectations up front. I think you know how it is, whether it be you know within your personal life, whether it be within your business, you know, if you don't have an expectation of what you should be doing or what is expected of you, it's very tough to be successful because you don't know where to go to achieve the goals to be successful. So when you bring a teacher in, we're moving really quick. We're trying to get them into a room. We know that we want them to help educate the kids, take care of them, provide security, you know, and uh, work with the parents, but they really don't understand what is truly expected of them. There's really no scorecard for that. That is a huge challenge. So do they really understand your goals and objectives? In a high purpose industry such we are in, you know, we're trying to produce the next generation of amazing children. We oftentimes, unfortunately, commoditize that job role. What does that mean? That means that quite often we're treating everybody the same and people don't understand what are they being measured on. Teachers need to be connected to the success of the child care program. What that means is having a scorecard. We've, I've mentioned this a couple of times. For those of you who are not overly familiar with the scorecard, it is basically a measurable document that you come to agreement with with your staff members as to what they're trying to achieve. Part of it could be just attendance and being on time. Part of it can be getting through the right kind of curriculum or activities or themes that they're looking to do. A portion of it could be is how their classroom is meeting regulation requirements. Are you guys getting violations in their classroom or what is the process that they're going through? Maybe working with other teammates. The challenge with creating expectations, though, is trying to create expectations that are measurable. That means something that you can objectively come to and say, you were here, 
and now you've achieved to come here. If they're very subjective, this is where it could create a lot of angst with staff. That means you're saying, I'd like you to be a better teacher. What does that mean? I'd like you to be more agreeable. How do I measure that? Those are things that are very difficult in conversations that if you're having with staff, not only do they border on challenges with the Department of Labor, they also border on the issue of creating more confusion, cronyism, you know, looking at who is my favorite as to who is actually doing things that is moving the needle for the organization. So really think about scorecards being something that give a person purpose to follow after the objectives in your organization. So you need to really help understand what your why is and make sure they understand why are you doing what you're doing. Poor compensation. So compensation is a huge challenge for all of us. We all would love to pay people significantly more than we can. We do know that staff, you know, especially from the amount of media input that's been out there, staff are hearing time and again that you should be getting paid more, you know, wages are going up, you have to get paid more. And it's a very difficult challenge that we have. So with that, you have to look at how do you address compensation of going above and beyond? So when you lack communications on how to earn more to your staff, they oftentimes feel lost. Are you doing performance reviews? Do you look at what they need to achieve, having a scorecard, for instance, like we just talked about, and achieving different objectives so they put themselves in a position? I'm a big believer that you just do not do annual reviews for the heck of it, and everybody gets an increase annually. I'm a big believer in the fact that people's performance dictates their compensation. So if you put objectives out there for them and you give them an expectation, they know what they can do to receive an increase. Whether you want to lay that out in very definitive terms, or at least you want to say, if you're achieving these objectives and we're meeting regularly and communicating, that is how you can get over the compensation issue because you're now compensating the people who are actually moving the needle for you as to the individuals who are just because of showing up, they might be getting more. So it needs to be aligned to your school values is critical that they're moving the needle for you according to what you want for your school, not for just being there. So this is something that helps you get a lot more control and then has the opportunity to align your staff to the performance that those individual people are having. So it takes effort. No doubt about it. It takes effort to do this work, but it is critical that if you can do a performance evaluation or at least a level of review on scorecards and you are providing that feedback, you are really setting up expectations for better compensation for the people who are moving the needle as to compensating people who are not helping you out as much. There's also an opportunity that if you do not want to increase an individual where they get at a new level of compensation when you're not exactly sure how they will perform over the long time, you really have an opportunity to create a bonus program possibly where you give them a one-time bonus for work that they have done well that incentivizes them, but maybe doesn't move the needle completely because long-term it might be tough for you to have people at much higher levels for compensation. So those are a few different ideas. Being overwhelmed is another huge issue that we have in the industry. This is really what happens is we take our very best teammates and what do we do? We have our very best staff members, the people who show up on time, the people who do exactly what you ask, the individuals who are there to try to please, and they're really working hard. So what do we do? Well, what we do is we overload that person with tasks. When someone else is failing, we give that person above, that best team member, we start giving them more work. That person usually does not say no, so they take it on. When someone else is apathetic, we're giving that performer the responsibility. Yes, we may give them additional compensation for that, which is wonderful that they're doing that. But when someone is overwhelmed, we have to recognize they have their own lives. They have children at home. They have soccer and baseball and sports and lacrosse and everything going on in their world too. Or, you know, 
dance lessons or having to manage an elderly parent. They've got a lot going on in themselves. So do you know if your staff members are overwhelmed and how are you measuring that? It is critically important for you to think about what are the things you can do to understand whether your staff, are you having those level of conversations to understand if they're overwhelmed or are you overly depending on some of your best staff today? Then bad managers and toxic employees. So when you look at your management and your toxic employees out there, most of our staff come from our teacher ranks. So our administrative staff, that is. So they become managers quite often from when they were being a teacher. There's, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, for running my schools for a number of years, there's been occasions where once in a while I was looking to bring in some additional management in addition to the director that didn't come from a teacher. And that oftentimes failed because they really needed to understand what it was to be a teacher to then manage them. And of course, our directors need that early education background. So what you oftentimes have is you have people who don't have management experience get promoted up maybe to a program manager or an assistant director, maybe even up to a director, but they haven't had formal leadership training of any type. So they are used to telling people what to do. They oftentimes have limited abilities, uh, what their capability is. And we do have a number of people who try to leave the classroom because they are either a monotony or they just want out and they want into administration, but they don't have that background and experience. So they first and foremost, you need to make sure that your management is aligned with their culture. What does that mean? We're going through a lot of information here, but management and alignment with your culture simply means that if you have an agreement of what your values are at your schools, whether it be you as the owner or you as the owner with the staff and your families, and you agree on what your values are, which is the best way to do it. If you have a manager who is going against the grain, they are not aligning with what your values and what your vision is for the organization. They're driving people in other direction. That can be dramatically impactful in a negative way to your staff. They do not share the school's values. It is going to be very difficult for you to build up a very strong reputation and for having staff stick around and not turn over. It must be immediately addressed and course corrected. If not, that individual, you may have to get them to go. One of the bigger challenges, though, when we have either bad management or toxic staff, I know what you're saying to yourself, but Tony, you know, we're in ratio. It's hard to get rid of somebody who's toxic even because they need that person. I haven't been able to recruit that person. Or a bad manager, you're like, I, I really don't want to go through getting rid of a director you know, that might not be working for me or assistant director that may be working for your directors or another staff member. But I will tell you this, consider what possibly is happening to the staff around them, the performers or the families that are watching this happen. What is happening to your reputation with your staff? What is happening to the reputation with your families? Is it worth it to invest still in that one employee who may be toxic or that one bad manager and watch your other staff walk out the door? That's what this presentation has all been about is really how do you stem? How do you turn that tide on turnover? It is really focusing on what happens when you have toxic staff or bad management. Some of those bad managers is not intentional. It's important to recognize it. It's just a lack of education. So looking at leadership training and development, we have some solutions at IC360, but there's other solutions out there too for leadership development of how to really get to a culture that has a leadership culture focused on coaching and development as to one about telling people. So let's move forward. But before we do, the last one, you who might be on this call may be part of the issue. Whether you're a director, whether you're an owner, you may not realize it, but you may be that bad manager. You may be that toxic employee and not even recognize it. Part of the challenge is, is quite often we get into our own ruts. We get into our own ways. We sometimes hear people say, well, you're doing this, and I can see how this is causing issues. Sometimes people don't even want to tell you what's going on. It's imperative for you to move up 
and ascend within your own organization, whether you're an owner operator, whether you're a director, or whether you're a program lead in a room, to try to self-identify what are the challenges that you're bringing? Are you possibly causing that turnover yourself? It's important to have that introspection too. Little or no recognition. Do you understand what is important for your team members? And we're not, you know, really, I should almost take the S off of that and put team member because you need to look at everybody as an individual. Recognition truly is meaningless to teammates and meaningless recognition and can be a negative. That is, you know, what I mean by that is, are you oftentimes doing things where you're recognizing people just for the sake of it? You know, are you going through the routine of having employee of the month when you're taking a person one month who's been a high purpose, high performer, and then the next month you're going, well, Janie hasn't been employee of the month and it's her time to become employee of the month. What do you think that does to the rest of your employees, right? It gives them going, you know what? They're not, they devalued me for being employee of the month. So when you start recognizing individuals who are not performing at that level, you are possibly creating a toxic culture yourself. So it's important that you focus on what is it that is important, not only to the company, but realistically, what's important to that individual? Sometimes wages are the most you know, important recognition. Sometimes time off and flexibility for them is more important than a wage because they've got family issues. Sometimes just being recognized in front of their peers is the very best thing. And I will tell you, that is probably the most value you can get is recognizing authentically your staff members in front of others for what they have truly done. It's not only inexpensive, it's highly valuable, but without being authentic, it's useless. So you need to really focus on who you're doing it for and what you're serving. But if you don't know for each one of your staff members or your directors don't know for each one of your staff members what motivates them, mm -hmm. then you're sort of throwing it up against the wall and hoping that it sticks, that it is something that will work as recognition. Mm -hmm. You might not, if you don't understand what it is, you need to really understand who your audience is. So catching people doing good and getting that unexpected recognition is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's so inexpensive to do. And honestly, every time that I do it, it just makes me feel good. Selfishly, I love recognizing people when I catch them doing good. So it is something that I actually do as a thing that helps me in my own business keep me going. But as I say in the beginning here, do not spread the peanut butter evenly. In other words, giving the same level of recognition for the people who are doing great to the same people who are not doing great can be more detrimental than anything. Poor work-life balance. This is difficult for all of us, whether we're owners, whether we're directors. We all have these challenges, and we know our staff have these challenges. School schedules dominate. You know, I often say that, you know, the secret sauce to our school is the staff, but our secret sauce to our staff is our schedules and scheduling. Scheduling is so critical because we are playing with people's lives in the sense of, we're trying to manage all the kids we have coming and going in ratio. But what we're also doing is we need to manage the expectations for the staff. Again, if they don't have an expectation by when they can get out, when they can come in, what is important for them, it is a real challenge for them. They have this uneasy feeling. They don't know what to expect. They feel like they're on unstable ground on thin ice. So is more you treat them as a cog in the machine, the less they're going to feel like they belong to your company and they belong to your school. So you need to really set strong protocols and focus on when and how they request time off. If you do not have established protocols for that, you have it where it's highly subjective. People are going to see favoritism or at least they may perceive it, even though there might not be favoritism. They'll be like, well, I don't know. You tend to give Tim, you know, all the time he asks for off. But when I come asking, you're like, nope, you didn't give me enough notice, blah, blah, blah. They need to know how much notice they need to give time off requests in. They need to understand what is the chances of them getting it. They need to understand your busy seasons, you know, blackout times, you know, through the past month, 
most of us have gone from our summer schedules of summer camp to going to our fall and winter and you know spring schedules and quite often times people don't have an understanding of what's going to change in their scheduling now is a perfect time to make sure that your staff has a full understanding they need to also understand that you know as you understand more about them they they need to understand that you are focused on them having a work life balance it is important for you to offer flexibility but if you're thinking about it in your mind and you're not communicating that you're trying to find ways around that they're not going to understand and realize that you're invested in trying to give them a work life balance so when we look at flexibility it is really about thinking outside of the box it is really about, can you do things such as a shorter workday? It is tougher to do that. I know that I tried for some of my directors for a while where I had four-day work weeks as to five-day work weeks. They're working 10 hours a day, but they had a shorter work week. That was great, and it worked out for a while, but then we started realizing there was some communication issues going on that weren't working for us, as well as some other issues where some people wanted certain times off and the other staff members who were administrative in nature, they were getting some conflicts. So we actually went back to five-day work schedules, but now we try to overhire a bit so we can give more flexibility. And we're trying to ensure that all of our staff know, and we encourage them to also take time off in the slower parts of our season. Boredom. Boredom is a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us in the sense that Everybody's coming into the same job time and day in, you know, over and over again. We're very busy. We have a lot going on. The days fly by in our schools, okay, for the most part. But for some teachers, when they're not engaged, it creates much more of a challenge. And our schools, much more than they are at home, you think about it, that's really where they're spending their time. If they don't feel like they belong or they feel like they're bored, you're going to have them wanting to leave the school. So if they're not engaged, they're just staring at the clock. Think about it for those of you who weren't engaged when you were back in school and you'd be waiting for that clock to tick. I know I was doing it at some point. Some of you must have loved school and that's perfectly fine. I just wasn't one of them. So I'd be waiting for that clock to tick to three o'clock so I could get out at some days and some points. That's how some of your staff are. And if they are bored, if they're not engaged, they are looking at how do they escape? They're not connecting with your vision. They're not connecting with your mission. They don't feel like they belong quite often. And so they're not relating to you. This gets again to that whole feeling connected. Can you connect them to what you're doing there? So what does that mean? That means is, you know, people stay at places they feel like they belong, whether it be like a fraternity or a club. Heck, why do people belong to gangs? Because they feel like they belong. And the opportunity is to look at people as individuals and what can they possibly offer to your school that maybe you didn't even realize. Maybe they're good at graphic design. Maybe they're good at copywriting. Maybe someone could be doing some of your social media posts, or maybe they could be doing your newsletters. Maybe it's an individual who could do some things to be in more of an ambassador with new staff coming on or an ambassador to new families that come on or they wanna help organize field trips or things of that nature. You really need to look at your individual staff and try to engage them for what is important for them, not just what's important for you. Then they'll start feeling like they belong. Once they become part of the fabric of your organization, that truly helps. So no opportunity for growth is a challenge for many of our staff because we talked about earlier. There is often times where you have, again, assistant teacher and teacher, you have director or assistant director and director, and that oftentimes is it. Even if you have only one school, you're like, well, what can we really do? There is a great opportunity for you to create upward mobility in your schools. If you think about it from an educator, you can have different roles like assistant teacher to possibly getting promoted to a junior teacher or a senior possibly a program lead who would be over a program like your infant program, or maybe they're over the, they elevate to being a program manager over multiple programs like infant and toddler. 
they can become a program director or something of that nature where they start helping you define organizing your curriculum as a curriculum director might, or an activities director, or like we talked about as an ambassador. Each one of these oftentimes can go with, if you are looking to give some additional compensation and you want to justify it, you can say, well, I'd like you to take on an additional role that has more responsibilities, and in turn, that gives you better compensation opportunities. Same with your administration. You can have an admin of training, an assistant director. Administration also doesn't mean that this all has to lay at just an assistant and a uh, a director. This could be your team members of being a teacher who could take on being the admin in training, but they're also one of your infant teachers, for instance. So there's an opportunity to have co-directors. I'm a big believer in having co-directors instead of just an assistant teacher and a, or excuse me, an assistant director and a director. I'm a believer that if you can elevate to really have a co-director, one who's on the license, but one who could be on the license, there's significant value in sharing the risk as well as the reward of leadership there. So there's a lot of roles, as you can see, that you can elevate to. And this is really a relatively inexpensive way to add in opportunity for growth Yes, you are going to be paying people more, as we talked about with compensation at different times based on performance, but you can also expand the opportunity of when they're getting paid more, the more that they can be in charge of, the more they become the fabric of your organization. You'll hear me say that a lot because that belonging and becoming the fabric is that key to getting them from year one through, you know, from year one to year two, to year three, where you're dramatically going from a 45% turnover down to eight, okay? Significant uh, changes. Bad hiring. We've done it before. I've done it before. This is, we need to get someone in the classroom quick. I cannot have my director. She's going to be going out for a period of time. We have to do this. So we often talk about what is the best, best process is Hire slowly, fire quickly. In our industry, it's not that easy. We know it's not that easy because we do need people in ratio as much as we want to. But we also talked about the toxicity of people. It is very difficult in our industry, as we know, bad hires occur in times of desperate needs. And a lot of times right now, we are trying to get teachers who really stick with us. So quite often, we're bringing people through and we're making it like a mill we're not going through reference checks. We're not put people in questions where they're interviewing and really truly getting to, you know, tell us stories of how you handle a situation like this. You know, what is your interview process like? How are you going through that? How are you ensuring? Are you just having one person interview and hire? Are they going through multiple? Is that person who's interviewing someone who hires very well. You know, part of the lexicon of things that Inspire Care 360 does is we have a, a deep bench of administrative knowledge on recruiting and how to recruit and what is the kind of training that management needs to go through. So bad hires occur in times of desperate need, like now. Let down our guard, evaluate for experience, yet not value. They are basically just going to be a beating harder, fog and mirrors, they say need to invest time in multiple interviews like we were talking about to get there, to get them to tell stories of how they would handle situations is really important in the interview process. A lot of people do what I call is they offer great interviews. They know how to answer all the questions. They've been there before. They know what you want to hear. You know, tell me about you. Oh, I show up all the time on time. Oh, I love children so much. I get right on the ground with them. Oh, I love to do this. Oh, yeah. I handle behavioral issues by using this process. They're answering all your questions. But put them in a situation. Tell me a time where you had a difficult situation where a parent was challenging you. And how did you handle that situation? Tell me a time where another staff member got very upset with you and you weren't sure what to do, but how you handled that situation. Those are the type of questions you want to be asking in the interview process. And then you want to have an opportunity for them to truly be observed in a classroom. What we do is we always have them in when we're going through the interview process. No matter what, they spend a few hours in the classroom. And we have the other teacher that are in there 
go through an observation with them after. So the other teachers in there, because you're going to end up working with that person too quite often, they go through a checklist, a written down checklist, and they not so much a checklist, but they give us their observations on a number of different topics. So how engaged were they? How communicative were they? Did they seem to have a perception across the entire school? Were they just working with one or two children or were they sitting back and letting you do everything? There's a number of different things that you can do to really understand how they will be as a teacher. The last one I have here is bricks and mortar. And that is out of the pandemic comes the fact that, you know, out of the lockdown was what happened? A lot of our schools were closed down or we were at minimum capacity. We had very few staff on or we did have all the staff on. We had a lot of people who were taking PTO time and time off. But what did that do? Well, that really had a lot of people either working from home, possibly doing some distance learning for kids who were at home. But is like that great resignation they talked about in the summer of 2021 last year. They really talked about the fact that people want to change and do things different. Well, we're in bricks and mortar. There's really no way around it. Yes, can we do some remote learning still for people? We can, but at the end of the day, our business is bricks and mortar that people have to bring them to a school to get the services that we offer them. So we have staff who are watching their friends work from home, having a lot more flexibility. And they're like, well, I wish I had that flexibility. What can I do to have that kind of flexibility? And that oftentimes means, well, I have to leave this field of childcare to go get that flexibility. So if you do not have that conversations that we talked about earlier, setting those expectations, creating fixed schedules, lack of value in camaraderie with teammates where they really feel like they're going to a wonderful place where they feel like they belong, okay? That is one of those things that, again, you know, why do you want to go to a place that if you don't feel like you belong there? Have you ever felt that feeling? It's sort of miserable. You know, even if you go to a party and you're like, I just don't belong here. Like, I'm, I'm going to be saying goodbye. I'm, I'm headed out. Because if you don't feel like you belong, it gives you an uneasy feeling. Well, imagine that's the place you work at every day. Our objective is not just to recruit. It's not just to hire. It's not just to orient. It's not just to get up to speed. It is to help them feel to belong. And one of the greater challenges that we have with belonging is our existing staff, the ones who've been there for two, three, 10, 16 years. There's a lot of bullying that happens to go on between our teachers. And it's subtle. But there's things such as, I'm just too busy. You can find that in the kitchen yourself. That little comment from a tenured teacher to someone who's brand new really puts that new person wow. uneasy. So we really have to think about what are the things we can do to get beyond that bullying side? And how do you make all of your existing staff that ambassador, that ambassador to try to make those new staff members stay? There's value in that, right? For the existing staff, there's tremendous value in them encouraging the new staff because they're not going to get overwhelmed. Your existing staff isn't they're as overwhelmed. They're not going to feel like they don't have opportunities to have flexibility because that's what the new staff is. So there's real opportunity in working on that. So how do you, you know, again, seek these items, create that scheduling, really look at an opportunity to offer flexibility. And we do have to get creative now. We have to get creative out of the box. People now do have doctor's appointments through the day and dentist appointments and different things they have to do for their kids. The more that you create this regiment where they can't do things and feel inflexible, the more difficult it is going to be for you to hold on to them. The more you create a methodology for them to get flexibility in their schedule, but communicate with you so they don't decide to ghost you and leave, the easier it is going to be to work with them. So really look at what are the things of why people are leaving. One of the things that Inspire Care 360 does too for all of our members is we do exit interviews because we're a big believer that unfortunately staff or families for that matter, when they leave, they oftentimes don't tell us the real reasons because there is sometimes a management issue, sometimes it's another staff issue, sometimes it's an owner issue. 
but we tried to do that as a third party to really help out to understand why people have left. So to relook at policies that may no longer work and cause unneeded tension. Quite oftentimes we do that. We have inherited these policies, maybe from a previous owner, maybe we started our business ourselves, but it was a different world a few years ago when we wrote those policies. It is now a time to really look at what they are. So in summary, what we have is, it is critical to engage your staff, to know who each person is, their hopes, their dreams, the timings, the waypoints that they have in their life. Are they just there? Are they going to be there for the long run? To go well beyond compensation to provide you a fulfilled job experience. Much more difficult than before. However, if you establish some key foundations around communication, purpose, the value of your organization, why you guys are doing what you're doing, that appreciation, that recognition that you can offer them, eliminating that toxicity of other team members or bad management, and possibly changing some of your own behaviors. Focus on your values in recruitment, performance management, and rewards. Build a career ladder for your team so they see that it's not a flat organization. This allows them to be empowered, to be accountable, but be empowered. Do not go through the motions and take inventory is what is working and what is not working. So that is the key thing is just don't go through it. Really understand what's working for you or not. So with that said, I greatly appreciate that's the pretty much the end of the presentation, but I did say if you want to hang on because what we're going to be talking about at Spark 2022 are a lot of these things, are a lot more ideas, because at the end of the day, we saw what the cost is, up to $40,000 for turnover. If you want to talk about stabilizing your organization and going beyond, you might want to consider joining us. We have a special promotion here that is going to give you almost $100 off a ticket if you were to join. And if we can send it in the chat, it's CCCRM, so Child Care CRM, Spark 22. So CCCRM Spark 22. Please use that if you are purchasing a ticket and you'll get almost $100 off on that ticket. And that'll show you in your cart. So we hope that you would join us. We would greatly appreciate it. If you want to register, you can also use this QR code here. And we would greatly appreciate that too. I think Adriana has put in the Q&A links to the registration as well as that promotion code so i would greatly like to think i think we're at the end of our time and i will leave this on the screen if you want to learn more you can either go to the website for inspire care 360 you can call us we pick up the phone or if you want to you know take a photo of that qr code which i guess everybody's doing today i do it myself i just don't like doing it for menus at a restaurant okay <laughs> But I want to thank you all very much for joining us. And thank you for having me, Adriana. Thank you for having me, Matt. And I think that's our presentation for the day. Any questions, Adriana? Thanks so much, Tony. Um, yes, we had one question. Uh, Nicole said that she really loves the idea of classroom observations, but certain states have restrictions that limit that. Do you have any alternatives? So... You know, states can definitely have that as an issue, you know, and I think it's very important for you to understand what would be involved, what, what your state's limits are, okay? So you can, as a director, as an administrator, you can go in there and observe yourself. There is nothing wrong with you being in the classroom. I know it's difficult, but possibly if someone steps out and you want to observe, there is nothing wrong with you, the hiring person, to be able to observe. That is a right in all states and federally. But I would definitely check that if you feel that there is a state reg on the, or state regulation, because it's not going to be with your licensing body. It's a Department of Labor issue. If you do have that in your state, you can dive into that. One of the things that we have like with Inspire Care 360 is what comes with their membership is access to HR professionals with no additional cost, they're able to answer those questions for you. But I would be happy to, if someone wants to email me for a certain state, I'd be happy to research that for her. So thank you. Okay, any other questions? Um, 
I don't see any more in the Q&A and don't see it in the chat. I just want to confirm that everybody is seeing the promo code in the chat. So hopefully they have. Because <laughs> it's in there. Yep, I'll bring it back on screen. Just again, it's down here and it's CCC RM Spark 22 for Child Care CRM Spark 22. So if you want to go in and you're interested in signing up for the conference, we'd love to have you. It's going to be a great show, intimate, great event. And how do you beat Florida in the, you know, in the beginning of the winter? So. Okay. She said, please keep it. I need to take a picture. Um, do we you want will. the uh, promo code or do we want the uh, QR yeah. code? So we have the we have the promo code here, um, and if you want to just drop it in again in the chat, that would be great. And I will put the QR code for Inspire Care 360 right here again. So if they want to take a picture, we'll leave it up on the screen. Cool. Thank you. We do have another question um, from Kellyanne. Do you have any suggestions to prevent teachers from calling out? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic mm -hmm. question, because we all deal with that issue. You know, part of it with calling out, we've had it happen too. A lot of it, again, is expectations. If you get into a cycle within your school, sometimes what happens is teacher calls out and they're really not sick. They're just calling out because they need a day off. Then what happens is another teacher goes, well, if they're going to get their day off, I'm going to get my day off. So they're going to call out. And then this becomes a you know, a spiraling down. First is in staff meetings, talking about what happens in call outs, how that puts undue burden on the other staff and what they're doing to their teammates when they have undue call outs is a challenge. Getting back to that flexibility part of, I want to be flexible with you. I do understand that you do need quality of lifetime to yourself. I can work with you and I want to work with you as to, because the more you know about what the flexibility you can offer them and the less rigid you are, the less call outs you're going to end up having in the long run. So it's usually a communication issue, but it's also setting an expectation of what the burden is that they're putting on everybody else. Anything else, Adriana? Um. That's everything I'm seeing right now. Okay. And again, if you want to learn about Spark uh, 2022, if you go to inspirecare360.com, you will uh, you will find, a, you'll see a, a tab there for Spark 2022, and we'd love to have you. So I would say uh, from Inspire Care 360, Adriana, we're very thankful to have me on here today. And I wish everybody the very best. Thank you. Thanks for all the great information. We really appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise with us. As always, if you have any questions or want to learn more, please uh, visit our website. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll send out the recording after this. Everyone have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks.